good luck charm loved by women. This ancient artifact will be used by humanity even in the future. Scientists try every day to improve it. An artifact more valuable than gold, a unicorn horn, a real treasure map and a creepy story of the Pope. Watch this video to the end and it will surprise you. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Ancient Metropolis in Serbia in the area of the Tamis River in Vojvodina, Serbia, archaeologists have discovered the remains of an ancient settlement covering an area of 13 hectares. This Neolithic city was surrounded by protective ditches indicating its importance and scale. The work was carried out jointly by specialists from various European scientific institutes who used the latest equipment for geophysical research. These studies helped reveal the existence of a previously unknown metropolis that existed here about 7,000 years ago. Artifacts discovered indicated the settlement was associated with the Vinca culture, ancient inhabitants of southeastern Europe who lived there between 5.5 and 4.500 BC. The size and structure of the settlement are impressive, and geophysical data show its structure in detail. The metropolis probably suffered from a major fire, which left behind many burned houses. This could have been the result of a raid or disaster after which the settlement was abandoned. In addition, the evidence found suggests the presence of at least four defensive of ditches, indicating a high risk of attack at that time. Lost part of the statue of Rameses II In 1930, German archaeologist Kenta Rader discovered in Egypt the lower part of a statue of Rameses II, known as Rameses the Great, who reigned from 1279 to 1213 BC. The statue was split and its upper part remained lost for centuries. After a long search, the upper part of the statue was finally found in Hermopolis, which was turned into an open-air museum. The discovery was made thanks to the efforts of archaeologists from Egypt and the United States during excavations in Hermopolis, which is located near Al al shumain Hermopolis was one of the main religious centers of antiquity dedicated to the god of wisdom Thoth. The upper part of the statue, 3.8 meters long, discovered under layers of sand, depicts the pharaoh wearing the traditional cobra headdress. The statue is made of limestone, with hieroglyphs glorifying Rameses II engraved on its back. The find also contains traces of ancient paint, which will enable scientists to accurately date the creation of the statue and establish its origin. Rameses II is known as one of the greatest pharaohs in the history of ancient Egypt. During his long life, he built many significant structures and strengthened Egypt's military and diplomatic power. General's Gold Jewelry in 2020, a huge trove of gold artifacts was found in Vindelif, Denmark, dating back to pre-Viking Age migrations. The finds included 23 gold objects, including 13 5th-century bracteates, gold fittings possibly from weapons, and four 4th-century Roman medallions. Particularly noteworthy is the runic inscribed bracteate, the largest ever found containing a reference to Odin, a key figure in Norse mythology. Research into these medallions has shed light on possible cultural and social connections between Vindelif and other regions of Europe. It is assumed that the medallions could serve as wedding ransoms or high gifts in elite circles. These gold medallions were probably worn by women as pendants, indicating the high status of their owner, who carried weight both locally and internationally. The peculiarity of these medallions is that they were given to prominent Roman figures such as senators and generals, and their presence in Vindelif, far from the Roman Empire, underscores the importance of this find. Britain will return their spirits to Aboriginal descendants. After seven years of effort, the Australian Aborigines achieved the return of unique wooden copies captured more than 250 years ago by the detachment of the famous navigator James Cook. These artifacts were brought to England as trophies after the first European encounter with the indigenous people in 1770 at Botany Bay, near modern-day Sydney. The spears, which belonged to the Aboriginal Gwigala clan, were kept for many years in Trinity College, Cambridge University, and then transported to the Cambridge Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. Cook initially took 40 copies to England, but only four survived to this day. These artifacts have now been returned and will be kept in an Australian museum close to where their original owners once lived. Recently, many countries, including Germany and the Netherlands, have begun to return cultural property taken away during colonialism. For example, Benin in bronze was returned to Nigeria, and valuable jewelry was returned to Sri Lanka and Bali. However, the UK continues to experience difficulties in returning its most significant 
significant artifacts. Greece, for example, has been trying for decades to return their, the Parthenon marbles, which are in the British Museum. Finally, after hundreds of years, all the ancient artifacts continue to return to their homeland, and in the near future, we will see empty European museums. An artifact more valuable than gold in 2023, in Carlisle, in the north of England, on the site of an ancient Roman bath, a unique artifact made of a special substance was discovered, more valuable than gold for the ancient Romans. This item, found by volunteers and archaeologists, is a solid example of Tyrian purple. To obtain this ancient dye, it was necessary to process about 12,000 shellfish living in the Mediterranean region. Tyrian purple, best known for its production in the city of Tyre in Lebanon, was prized for its brightness and durability and was used for dyeing clay clothing and wool paintings. The process of this production was complex and labor-intensive, which made this pigment extremely expensive and accessible only to the highest trade of society of the Roman Empire. The specimen found at Carlisle was used to create murals or dye fabrics. This is the only known example of a solid example of Tyrian purple in Northern Europe and possibly throughout the Roman Empire. This discovery not only highlights the complexity and richness of ancient Roman culture, but also contributes to further study of the interactions of ancient civilizations and the spread of their cultural and material achievements beyond traditional boundaries. The history of the burial of an ancient Egyptian prince In a cemetery in Middlebury, Vermont, there is an unusual grave that stands out from the rest. This is believed to be the burial place of the Egyptian prince Amun Kahapesh Epha, who was born in 1881-81 BC during the Middle Kingdom of Egypt and died at the age of two and a half years. His father, Senvasad III, later became pharaoh and ruled during the 12th dynasty, famous for his military campaigns and the construction of the Sesostris Canal. The boy's mummy was likely taken from Egypt grave robbers during the Victorian era and eventually ended up in the collection of a 19th century American museum. Henry Sheldon, a collector and founder of the Vermont History Museum, acquired the mummy from Spanish sailors and stored it in his museum's attic due to its poor condition. After Sheldon's death in 1907, the mummy remained unclaimed until 1945, when museum director George Mead decided to cremate the decayed remains and bury them in the cemetery to avoid possible student vandalism. The tombstone is decorated with a Christian cross surrounded by the Egyptian symbols Ankh and Ba, symbolizing life and spirit. Five skeletons found in Wolf Slayer during excavations at the Wolf Slayer site in Poland, where Adolf Hitler's headquarters was located, archaeologists discovered five human skeletons. The find included the remains of three adults and two children, one of whom was a newborn. The peculiarity of the burial was that the bodies were naked and without limbs, which indicates the unusual nature of the burial. The Wolf Slayer, hidden in a dense forest and protected by barbed wire, guard towers, and minefields, served as a place where Nazi leaders planned their military operations. This base was destroyed by the Nazis during the retreat from the Red Army in January 1945. Among the artifacts found near the bodies were thunderstones, fossils of ancient sea creatures that in ancient times were considered magical talismans that could bring good luck in battle or protect against lightning. Octavian Bartoszewski, a participant in the excavations, suggested that the bodies may have been buried as a ritual sacrifice to ensure success and prosperity for those who occupied the building. Hermann Göring, the previous owner of the building, is known for his interest in the occult, which may explain the presence of such an unusual burial in his residence. The Nazis, including Hitler, were known for their obsession with the supernatural, which was reflected in their predilection for various occult practices and theories. This discovery not only confirms the dark legacy of the Nazi regime, but also once again demonstrates its desire to use any means, including mysticism and sacrifice, to achieve its goals. An ancient toy for adults the artifact, which is already more than 2,000 years old, was found in Great Britain back in 1992. Initially, archaeologists assumed that this wooden object was used as a sewing tool. However, further studies suggested that it could be an ancient sexual device. Most scientists agree that the wooden object found is in the shape of a phallus. The uniqueness of this artifact is that it has not changed its shape and method of use even after thousands of years. And the most interesting thing is that its shape will not change in the future for obvious reasons. However, 
There are several versions regarding the use of this artifact as a sex toy. Based on Roman images, it is known that they had dildos, but they rarely came down to us because they were most often made from organic materials. Also, some archaeologists suggest that slave owners could use such an object to inflict pain and demonstrate power over slaves. Others believe it could have been a good luck charm. Indeed, in ancient times, amulets of this shape were very common. As a final option, it could be used as a mortar for grinding, for mixing spices and other materials used for culinary or medicinal purposes. Unicorn Horn let me introduce you to the life of a medieval unicorn. This creature, although mythical, faced the cruel attitude of humanity. People hunted unicorns for their magical horns, which were believed to have unique properties, such as the ability to purify water and remove poison from food. Unicorns were believed to exist according to the testimony of many ancient scientists, including Aristotle and Cetesius, as well as great minds such as Leonardo da Vinci. In the Middle Ages, unicorns personified purity and wisdom. Their horns became a symbol of prosperity and could serve as an indicator of food poisoning among the aristocracy. But how do you find a unicorn horn in a world where these creatures don't exist? This question has been answered through the use of the horns of other animals, such as rhinoceroses or walruses. Most popular, however, are the tusks of narwhals, animals from the Arctic whose curled tusks have been mistaken for centuries for the horns of unicorns. Travelers and hunters secretly obtained these horns and sold them to Europeans as the horns of mythical creatures. Thus, merchants and great rulers like Lorenzo de' Medici and Queen Elizabeth I paid huge sums for these tusks, considering them symbols of power and protection. Even the Grand Inquisitor Thomas de Tolkimata did not travel without a piece of such a horn, believing that it could save his life from heretics. With the development of science and the progress of research methods, belief in the miraculous properties of unicorn horns has subsided, and now they remain only exhibits in museums, a reminder of how legends and reality were intertwined in human history. New details about Neanderthals Scientists have been studying one of the oldest Neanderthal artifacts in Europe for more than 70 years, a bare bone with engraved lines. Found in a cave in Poland between 115 and 130,000 years ago, this bone has now been studied using modern techniques such as microscopy and X-ray scanning. It turned out that the 17 lines on the bones are not random scratches but were deliberately applied in a certain order. This discovery suggests that Neanderthals used bone not just utilitarian object but as a carrier of symbolic information which may indicate their advanced cognitive abilities. The discovery of a bone with intentional carvings suggests that Neanderthals may have had forms of symbolic communication much earlier than thought. This artifact becomes a key element for understanding the ancient history of mankind. It not only expands knowledge of the historical context of Neanderthals, but also confirms their capacity for high-level thinking. Two sensations on one stone in the village of Yalabuga in Russia, an amazing archaeological discovery took place. A basal boulder with petroglyphs reminiscent of the famous Sikachialian rock paintings was found. An image of a praying mantis was also found on this stone, which is rare for this region. An expedition of scientists from Moscow arrived in the region to study the find. Initially, archaeologists were skeptical about the report of petroglyphs, but on the spot they confirmed the authenticity of the artifact. Various figures are visualized on the stone, including the rare image of a praying mantis, which is unique in the whole world. Scientists continue to study this area, quadcopters to record coordinates and create a digital map of petroglyphs. The main question that remains open is the origin of the boulder with such unique patterns. There are hypotheses that the stone could have arrived with ice drift or been brought in another way. 3D models made from the drawings will allow archaeologists to present to the public exact copies of the yellow bug of finds, confirming their importance and unique this find not only confirms the rich history of the region, but also opens up new perspectives for the study of ancient civilizations. Found the treasure using grandfather's old map Two brothers from Germany found a treasure in Lubomirz, Poland, using a map drawn by their grandfather in 1952. They went on vacation to Poland and one of their destinations was Lubomirz, where their grandfather, who worked as a gardener, buried valuables before leaving. A map found in the family archive helped them find the place described by a relative. Arriving in Lubomirz, the brothers asked local residents for a shovel for excavation, but their actions seemed suspicious and a local resident reported them to the police. Excavations were 
were temporarily stopped until the brothers received the necessary permits. After the formalities were settled, archaeologists joined the excavations. Grandfather's map turned out to be not just a map, but a ladder indicating the location of the treasure burial. At the designated location, the brothers found two antique jugs containing valuable finds, including watches, jewelry, 19th century coins, and a cigarette case from 1935. Apparently, these items were war trophies. The discovered artifacts were sent for examination to assess their historical significance. If they prove valuable, they can be legally seized and given to a museum. Otherwise, the treasures will be returned to the brothers. The Other Side of the Pope Balthazar Cossa, who became John XXIII, proved that even the pirate could find himself on the papal throne. His life began in 1370 on the island of Procida, and from an early age he became interested in piracy along with his brothers. However, at the request of his mother he went to study in Bologna and quickly turned from a robber into a theologian. At the university, Balthazar formed the Ten Devils Gang, was involved in petty racketeering, and even met his love, the witch Yandra de la Scala. But after her arrest by the Inquisition, he killed two inquisitors and went to prison himself from where his friends rescued him. After escaping, Balthazar returned to piracy until his ship was wrecked, at which point he vowed to become a priest if he survived. Having survived and fulfilled his vow, Balthazar encountered Pope Urban VI and was involved in the dark affairs of the papal court, becoming an executioner and murderer. After Urban's death, his successor Benedict XVI sent Balthazar to suppress the uprising in Bologna, which he did with take royalty. As a reward, Balthazar received control of the city. Continuing his path in the church hierarchy, he took out a loan and bought himself a bishopric. After the death of Alexander V, Balthazar took the opportunity and was elected pope, becoming John XXIII. However, his reign was short. At the Council of Constance, he was overthrown, accusing him of many crimes. Not giving up, Balthazar escaped, but was caught and released for a large sum. Returning to Bologna, he lived to the end of his days, dying of cancer. On his grave, there is a monument by Donatello. The story of Balthazar Cossa shows how unpredictable people's destinies can be and how sometimes even the most incredible personalities can leave a noticeable mark on history. Throughout the history of the Catholic Church, a great variety of terrible, vile and mystical evidence has accumulated. This story is just a small confirmation. If you want to learn more about the history of the Vatican, the archives of the Pope and cooperation not only with the Nazis, write in the comments under the video. I will prepare a video on this topic. Thank you for watching this video to the end. See you in new videos on the channel.